right, almost a Friday. Thirsty Thursday, Masters today, par three yesterday. I'm just wondering how the weather's going to be. That's the biggest thing that, that I'm looking at. But we've got a great show for you. Uh, how is the weather going to be? Hey, it's been kind of up and down. I, I don't it's going to be like weather. I don't know about you guys, but last night it, was, it right. absolutely fell down at, at our house. There was like a huge yeah. cell that was moving through. I know it absolutely smoked Mobile earlier yesterday. But last night, my dogs, I mean, you'd have thought it was the first scene from the new Twister movie. I mean, they just absolutely freaked out. Yeah, it's been kind of nasty. Um, all right, I have some Masters trivia for you guys if you Good. want it. It's been 17 players who've won the Masters multiple times. Jack leads the way with six green jackets. Tiger has five. Who's the only golfer with exactly four green jackets? Four? I don't think it's Phil. I'm going to say, give me Tom Watson. What do you say? Uh, four green jackets, Dave. You said Tiger has five. Jack has six. Is Arnie Palmy alert? Arnold Palmer. Mm. 58, 60. I didn't think it was going to be that obvious. 58, 60, 62, and 64. Actually, Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholson went on a five-year stretch where they won all five of them. Uh, Arnie Palmy alert! Tom Watson is on the list, though. 77 and 81. Yes. Tommy. How many Phil have? Phil has three. Phil 04, has three. 06, and 2010. Nick Faldo has three. Gary Player has three. Sam Sneed has three. It's a good list, boys. It is, Not to yeah. brag, guys, but I did get that right from here in the control room. I had to let you know. I don't believe it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to see the tape. I do not believe it. After, after all the collusion that's gone on in the control room in the past, you guys have technology, too. So, all right, got a great show for you. The 2024 Masters begins today. Washington Huskies running back Tybo Rogers gets arrested on two counts of rape. And Elon Musk's AI program releases the most drunk preseason college football top 25 in the history of preseason top 25s. I'm Jake Crane. It's a Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Ooh. And come take a swing with us on Crane and Company. Now, love him or hate him, Tiger Woods is the most impactful player to his sport in my lifetime, and possibly ever. There's a good argument there. And if this weekend is his last go-around at the Masters, then regardless of how well he plays or if he, if he makes the cut, I'm just thankful I got to be around to watch his rise, his fall, and, well, his rise again. Now, never before have I seen one man make a whole sport cool around the globe change the way the game is played, play the villain and the hero, make incredibly clutch shots in huge moments, and overcome adversity time and time again. Now, growing up in our house, I loved watching him, and my father loved rooting against him because of his on-the-course antics. He was a little bit different in the way that he handled himself. But it doesn't matter how you felt about Tiger Woods. You were going to watch him, and that's the most important thing. Now, we saw him make grown men melt in front of our eyes, and he took over the sporting world time and time again. Now, has he made some questionable choices in his past? Without a doubt, but that is all part of what's been the Tiger Woods experience. And unfortunately, we will never see someone do what he has done to the game of golf again, or maybe any other sport. But see, in golf, they don't have to, because Tiger has already elevated the sport so much from one pole to the other that golf is here to stay in the forefront for the long haul. So enjoy your pimento and cheese sandwiches, father and sons, and let's see if Tiger can go on the prowl once again in Augusta. Let me go ahead and bring on yes. co David Cohn, former mission quarterback, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. Guys, it's here, and we're going to get into it. We want to know who in, in the chat. We got the phone lines open it up, 7.15 a.m. Central. If you're on Augusta time, that's 8.15 a.m. Eastern. We want to know who you're picking to win it. But in the, the talk of the most impactful player to their sports ever, and I say player because the most impactful person to their sport is the person who invented it. Because without that, 
<laughs> no, none of none of this would even be possible. Shia but when you yeah, <laughs> when you look at at Tiger's oh. just whole encompassing impact on the game of golf and the way that he raised it in every aspect, I cannot think of another player and it maybe if you consider eating a sport, maybe Joey Chestnut, but Kobayashi was doing stuff before him. Is there anybody that's been more impactful than Tiger Woods? No, no. And, and, and he may not be the greatest athlete of all time. We were talking about Wayne Gretzky the other day, how he's just, you know, head and shoulders above everyone who's ever played hockey. But if you're going to use the word impactful, then it would have to be Tiger Woods. And of course, you know, it just so happens we were of the age when Tiger was coming yeah. around and dominating. So that's always going to be a part of our upbringing. But still, I think that you can just go and look at the data when it comes to the sport. And I think he's the first athlete billionaire as well, certainly the first uh, billionaire golfer. And let's all just take a minute to be thankful that he's going to be competing in this Masters. I don't know how well he'll do. I don't know if he'll make the cut. His odds did improve overnight. It was plus 12,000 yesterday, good. plus 10,000 today. But Ooh, remember, it was the good. month we met that he got in that car accident. That was right when we That's, first met. True. And I mean, people were talking about he may never walk again, and now he's gonna be walking the greens at Augusta National this week. So for that, we should be thankful. Blaine, is Tiger gonna win? No. No, no, no chance. Not. No, is he gonna make the well, cut? Well, there's always a chance. Is he gonna make the cut? See, now we're talking about bets. Okay. That's the odds I wanna see on Tiger making a cut this weekend. Okay. Because if, when it comes to the Masters, you just, you just wanna be, you just wanna be close, right? You wanna be in shooting range on a Sunday, where you you can make a run. And I don't think people realize how dominant Tiger was during his run. I saw some stats. For Scotty Scheffler to catch Tiger's total week spin at number one, he would need to be at top every week for 12 years and three months. That's insane. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Well, like his cuts made streak too is just absolutely nuts. Like there's some records, you know, we, we talk about, you know, DiMaggio's, you know, the consecutive game hit streak. Uh, that, that are just never going to be broke. Cal Ripken Jr., the amount of you know games played in a row. It, it just, I don't know if there's ever going to be somebody that comes close. Now, I know that Tiger didn't reach or hasn't reached Jack Nicholas in, in majors. I don't know if he will. I think the game's way more competitive nowadays. Uh, yeah, I but, uh, I mean, you look at the numbers, and it's just astounding what this man did. In the game of golf, which is so peculiar and and... You know, guys have, have dominated, but but not this way, David. It's just... Yeah, no. Um, right now, the odds for Tiger to make the cut, uh, they range from plus 110 to minus 120. So plus 110 to minus 120. Okay, I mean, plus money's not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's health. Can he be healthy enough to make it? I don't want to, yeah. you know, I don't want all of a sudden we get to hole four, you know, he ah. hits a root and all of a sudden, you know, his body shuts down. That's, yeah. that's what worries And if you've ever played golf, all right. If you ever walked the course a little, got on the golf cart, this stat's more, almost even crazier to me. From 2004 to 2006, Tiger had 1,466 putts from three feet and in. He missed only three of them. Out of Are how you many? Serious. 1,466 putts from three feet or in. From 2004 to 2006, Tiger Woods missed three of them. See, that's what they're talking about when they, when they talk about Tiger proofing a course because he yeah. hit it so much farther than everyone else. Mm -hmm. He's making 1,400 three-foot putts. Like it doesn't, oh. That's why he was like, you can make the course as long as you want. Doesn't matter. Hurt my chances to well, win. Like they, again, they had to change the way the courses are set up because Tiger Woods was just playing it different than everybody. You can't change that. He no. was destroying <laughs> the ball to the fairway. Yeah, his iron game is majestic. And then he's a witch with the putter. I mean, he's and three feet and in, that's incredible. I wonder how many 10-footers and in that he mm -hmm. made. Like, I need to see the percentages on that. Because this dude, it seemed like, made every clutch putt that there was. All the most famous go golf shots that, that just come, you know, the top of my head, outside of Phil Mickelson at Augusta, the one he hit out of the woods uh, on that par four, that it's Tigers, right? I, I mean, the, the most iconic shot, in my opinion, in golf is the one that he chipped in yeah. where the Nike ball just stops right where the logo is and then falls in. Like, it's just some guys I think are from a different things. planet. Uh, yeah. It's it's just nuts what he's. Been. Um, so the, really, the only golfer since Tiger, who I mean, we always used to talk about, would you take Tiger or the field in these majors, right? Which is just an insane conversation, anyway. But the only golfer that's sort of getting close to that tournament after tournament is Scotty Scheffler. 
You know, and Scotty Scheffler right now, plus 500 to be the outright winner this week. The next best odds are Roy McElroy at plus 1,200, which you said if you put a- Well, I said, look, if you want to bet $100 on Roy McElroy at plus 1,200 to win the Masters, you are going to lose $100. <laughs> and maybe this is the one. Maybe this is, and this will be clipped forever. And I mean, you know, I don't he know if needs Roy this watches for the career the needs Grand it. Slam, right? The career grand slam. I believe so. Green yep, I believe so. But we want to know who you're picking. We got a ton to get to as well. But regardless of who you're betting on, there's only one place where you need to bet at, and that's betonline.ag. Now, it's not just golf. It's not just Major League Baseball. It's not just NHL. It's not 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 just one sport. They have everything. If they're playing Quidditch at Hogwarts today, you're going to find odds on it at betonline. AG. You saw the college basketball tournament. They had a great bracket challenge. They're, they always have really cool pools that are going on as well. It's a very easy site to navigate. And they pride themselves on their higher than average betting limits of up to $25,000. So go to betonline.ag. You got time. We haven't teed off yet. Go to betonline.ag to place your bets today. Use promo code BOOSTER, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, for a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to $1,000, and it helps out the show. It's a win-win. That's betonline.ag. Use promo code BOOSTER, B-O-O-S-T-E-R. BetOnline, where the options are endless, and so is the fun. All right, let's get to the Booster Club. All right, let's go to Joshua Pazala. Joshua, what is up? He says, who's made a bigger impact on their sport, Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan? See, I think it's Tiger. It be Tiger. I think it's Tiger. Uh, not that Michael Jordan didn't have a huge impact. He did, uh, you know, with Nike and the shoes. But guess who else had a huge impact with Nike as well? It's it's Tiger Woods. That you, We've had Magic Johnson before him and Larry Bird before him. And Michael Jordan, you know, did play the game at an unbelievably high level. And he was the most clutch player, in my opinion, of, of all time when it comes to basketball. But Tiger elevated all of it. All of it. They were both global phenomenon. But it, it just... I don't even know if there's an argument there for that. Mm-hmm. And who, who asked that, Josh? Josh, I, 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 don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's a bad question. I just, you know, you've, you had Clyde Drexler and Dr. J and all these guys that were hanging through the air and, and Duncan, and, and I know MJ and, you know, was, was better than they were, but Tiger's still like the only one. Like there's no LeBron to his MJ. There's no, you can make an argument that Steph Curry changed the game of basketball Dad gum near as much as anybody with the way that he shot the three, the way that he shoots three pointers and and kind of strategically the way the game is played. So I've got to go Tiger. Yeah. So when you talk about Steph, though, you're talking about like on the basketball. Just strategically. When I think of Tiger's impact on golf, I'm thinking about all the people he brought into the sport. Without a doubt. Who wouldn't have had any affiliation with golf before. And I think a legitimate argument could be made that Jack Jack Nicholas is still the greatest golfer of all time. Like at least Tiger, at least there's an argument to be made there. Kind of like we talked about in hockey. There's really not one because Wayne Gretzky is so good. We can have the Michael Jordan and LeBron debate in basketball. We can have the Tiger and Jack argument in golf. But the impact, you know, the impact, you have to give it to Tiger. Yeah. And and the crazy thing, too, about Tiger is, like, when Yao Ming came to the NBA and, you know, everybody in in his home country, you know, fell in love with basketball even more, well, that's because he was from there. Like, you watch some of these guys, like, international golfers from everywhere— from you know an Asian place, from a and you know an, an Anglo-Saxon place, Australia, whatever, Mexico, they all started playing because Tiger Woods did what he did. And Tiger's from America. Like it's not like he was from there. It's not like, hey, this is our guy, and he's going over there now. Now, you know, all of a sudden some North Korean golfer pops up and like Kim Jong-un and all them are out at the golf course hitting 18 hole in ones in a row, which apparently that's what they said he did after he got done talking to dolphins which we all know that's not true. But it's just, it, from a global community standpoint, Tiger Woods, I wonder just just net how much money Tiger Woods has made golf. I don't think you'll ever be able to know exactly the amount, but it has got to just be a stupid, godly amount of money that Tiger Woods made golf. All right, let's go to S. Boone. He says, is Tiger still Tiger if Adidas signed him back in the day instead of Nike? I think so. I don't think Adidas would still be Adidas in the grand scheme of things if they had signed Tiger back in the day. I, I, I don't think the, the brand would have knocked off anything that Tiger Woods achieved on the course. He was just that good. I mean, he, he was beating people to death. 
on the golf course. I mean, you talk about guys that you remember. You remember David Duvall, like just intimidated him out of the out of the sport. Like all of them, <laughs> he made guys. He was so good. He was making guys lose the weight. Like David Duvall lost all the weight and then, then struggled because his body was different. Phil Mickelson, you know, Phil was a little bit thicker, and he lost weight. They, Tiger's fitness level too. You know, I mean, his waist. It, it's just it's. It's nuts the way he, ch- he changed everything, every single thing. I- if the grass would have turned blue, it would have been because of Tiger Woods. He won his first Masters by 12 strokes. That was the 97. He won his first U.S. Open by 15 strokes. I believe that was the Pebble Beach Tournament. Then he won his first Open Championship by eight strokes. And I mean, he just came on the scene and was destroying people. And you remember how thin Tiger Woods used to be? You remember how like skinny he used to be like coming out of Stanford? Isn't that where he was? And, and another cool thing, and, and this is where, even though I'm not the biggest LeBron fan off the court, where I got to give LeBron credit, is that they were calling Tiger the chosen one, right? They were like, this guy's the one, and he lived up to it, and he lived up to it. And I got a respect level for that when you can meet those expectations. I'm just wondering how Charlie Woods is going to be. That's we'll what find I'm, out. I mean, when you're having to get your girlfriends out of your house by telling them you're going on vacation— and then God, change man. the locks. What a high class problem. That's a dumb I'm just different. trying to keep keep Reed to stay in the house. <laughs> All right, let's go to Blake. Not C. locked up though, right? Yeah. Not anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to Blake C. Says Tiger get hit it far. He had a good swing, but who do you think has had the smoothest swing in golf? The smoothest swing in golf. I'll give you one. Fred Couples. Uh, it's the gotta be buttery. It's gotta, you gotta be go Fred big Couples. easy. Buttery. You think so? Yeah. I mean, Fred Couples' swing is so smooth, they teach you to say that when you're swinging. Like, Freddy Couples. It just, That's how you know you got He came out of the womb just absolutely sautéing an eight iron. It's like, it looks like he's barely hitting the My ball. dad loved Fred Couples, bro. Yeah. He's loved great. Fred Couples. All right, let's go to Jared Hallett. He says, let's go, boys. My picks for the Masters. Brooks, DJ, Cam Smith, Tommy Fleetwood, and Tiger. Okay, I so like that. half the field. I need one pick. I need one pick. I don't need nine picks. Give me your one pick because I know who I'm going with. I sat there and looked at it really? last night. Yeah, I sat there and looked at it last night, and and I'm I've I've made my decision. I, I'm not gonna let Rory. I'm not gonna let everybody know right now. Rory. When are you gonna When are you gonna let everybody know? Because I want to know. I don't. Well, I want to know what everybody thinks in the chat too. Uh, remember, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, please. And uh, if you donate and it's on topic, we'll read it at the time. If not. We'll read it at the end of the show. All right. You want to know how I'm going with? Hmm. Give me Wyndham Clark. That's right. Wyndham. Wyndham. Plus three wow. Someone's been watching full swing. Give me, no, give me Wyndham. I like it. He's confident. He's not getting pissed anymore. He's not hitting his bag with his nine iron. And I'll tell you what, the man's, speaking of bag, the man's bag is deep. I think he's he's narrow focused. He's already won a major. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I'm just telling you, I like Wyndham Clark. It smells good. It smells good this week. Even if, you know, just make the cut. Just like, like Blanier said, just be within in striking range on Sunday. I just, I don't know, man. It just when it just, I was with? looking at it. What are you feeling over Who there? Who you going with? I'm going with Brooks Kepka. Going Brooks, really? No one shows up to the majors like this guy. Three PGAs now, two okay. US Opens, tied tied for second in the Masters twice. It's time. It's time to put the green jacket on. Odds plus fifteen hundred. Wow. Brooksy for the win. Okay, I like that. Don't you wanna? A little bit of that Hideki Matsuyama. See, I know why you're doing Hideki it. Hideki Matsuyama! Uh, or he and if he loses, he commits Sepku after the tournament, so I feel better about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if he's going to have a bowl of miso sorry before yeah, the, he, I know why Blaine's picking it. I'll never forget this. And I think he said it on the show. When, when did he win? Three years ago? Like, yeah. right when we started. Right when we started over here at the Daily Wire. Uh... It was like, what were the odds? They were insane. Plus, you won in 2021. Plus 5,000. They were plus 5,000. And Blaine was like, I, I should put 100 on, or even more than that. You're like, I should yeah, put like I was five, put 500, on. 500 on Hideki Matsuyama to win the Masters at 50 to 1. At 50 to 1. And he didn't bet it. He said it, but he didn't bet it. Cost him. <sighs> Thank God Dallas Goddard He's, came through with be that. Be so sorry. Yeah, you are so sorry. Mm. You are so sorry. All right, let's, go. let's go to Jackson Cannot. He says, Wyndham Clark from the Rafters. Crane, I'm rolling with you. Oh, God. You said Jackson? That is Jackson Cannot. Hey, we're right here. We're my mouthing. We're my mouthing, Jackson. Me and you. Together we can. All right. Let's go to Ricky V. Ricky V, what is up? Says, give me your sleeper pick. Mm. 
for what? the Masters. Sleeper? I, I tell you, I, I, I'll give you one. And I saw him last week. He won last week. Give me Batia, and I'll tell you why. All right, he won in that playoff against McCarthy. He had to win that tournament to get in the Masters. He not, hey, I got to finish third. He had to win it. Uh, and, I, and his odds are going to be astronomical. Astronomical. But give me Batia. I believe it's B-H-A-T-I-A. Lefty, right? Just a thin lefty. Like plus 12,500. Plus right 12,000. You want to talk about a sleeper? Ooh. That one. Snorlax. What do we then think about? It's like, what do you classify up? as a sleeper? See, I think Wyndham Clark's a sleeper. What's his odds? odds? Like plus plus three thousand. Plus three thousand. All of this you, is on Bet Online, or by the way, Dustin Johnson. Yeah, Dustin Johnson. Plus right Dustin now. can't be a sleeper. Plus well, eight hundred. I think you look at it like this: where you're ranked in the world. Okay. That's right. Is that's probably the best way to do it. That would how about, be the best how about, I give you two. How about Max Homa is at plus 10,000 right now to win? I like Max how Homa. How is Max and, Homa plays the top five player in the world? I know. And that's wild. And then Harris English is plus 13,500 right now. One of the coolest names in golf. Harris, man. Harris can mess around and win this thing. I just felt like he was like 007's friend. By the way, I want to make a correction yesterday. I was wrong when I said that in, uh, not to skip subjects here, but I want to make sure I, I get this done. NAIA does offer scholarships, hmm. right? You, they're just like, Pretty much partials. Partials. It's Division it. Three that doesn't offer scholarships. Gotcha. I was I was incorrect saying that. I want to make sure I, I correct that on the record. All right, Uno Mas. All right, let's go to Oscar Gomez. Says y'all think Scotty can be the next coming? No, of Tiger Woods. No, no, but that's unfair. Like, can Scotty be the next best golfer in the world? I mean, he already is. He's he's the world number one. But from a dominant standpoint, I just do not. There's. And I think it's a compliment to golf. I think there's too many incredible players that are able to hit the ball really far, that, that can throw the soft landing up there from the fairway and then drain the putt. I think Scheffel can dominate, but dominating at that level, I mean, it's it's just, it's like putting a guy that that throws 100 miles an hour playing baseball back in like the 1920s. You just, it, he was just different. And another thing is, even if Scheffler ends up being as dominant as Tiger Woods, he still wouldn't have the impact. That's why it was so crucial that yeah. you use the word impact for golf, right? I mean, just Tiger brought in so many eyeballs at a time when golf needed it most. Yeah, and, and again, we want to hear from you. The line's open 7.15 a.m. Central. It's one 855 236 All right, we're going to get back to the golf. We're going to get back to the Booster Club. But David, I, I saw this yesterday and listen, um, I, I'm glad that, you know, technology is advancing somewhat. Am I worried we're going too fast? Yeah, <laughs> especially after what Japan said yesterday um, with what's happening with AI. But but they asked Grok, I believe, I'm trying to think it was this college football report. I need to make sure I get this right. Uh, ask Grok. Okay. It's college football alerts. College football alerts. God, it was close. Ask Grok a way too early top 25 for college football. And listen. This got just bad RJ Young poll written all over it. I love it. Georgia, no, first <laughs> off, no Ohio State <laughs> no, in nowhere. the top 25. So it's already blasphemous. No Buckeyes or Bama. Georgia and Ohio State have the best <laughs> roster. <laughs> yeah, best roster in the country. Bama not being uh, on there is insane. Rutgers at 22. <laughs> Northwestern just, at 23. They just started filling in Big Ten teams. Yeah, why? Well, it's it, <laughs> this, Who let Nebraska in there? Yeah, well, look, I can act. I don't think Nebraska is nearly the craziest thing on this list. How in God's name is Ohio State and Alabama? I'm not saying they got to be top five. No, I think Ohio State's for sure top five. But how is Ohio State? If that comes to fruition, they're going to put Ryan Day in one of those big wooden owls like Nicolas Cage off the oh. Wicker Man and set him oh. on fire, David. Oh, I can't wait. Read it out to people. So here we go. Georgia's one. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that. I try. Oregon's two. You can talk me into that. Sure. Texas is three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oklahoma's four. No. 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 No chance. Missouri, that's that's Missouri, right? No. That's no, Michigan. That's Michigan. I'm just messing Come on now. Michigan's five. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, Michigan's five. Eh, no. It's gonna be tough. Florida State six. Okay, they're pissed. I can understand it. Notre Dame seven. Utah eight. Clemson sense. nine. Tennessee ten. Okay. LSU eleven. USC twelve. Y'all okay. better tackle somebody. Maybe. I know Bear Alexander's coming Feasible. back. Feasible. Washington thirteen. No. UCLA fourteen. Hell no. <laughs> Penn State fifteen. Believe it. A and M sixteen. I don't think that's crazy. Oklahoma State seventeen. 
Oregon State, 18. Ah. Oh, Damian Martinez is leaving. Uh, me so sorry. Uh. Wisconsin, 19. Nebraska, 20. Minnesota, 21. Believable. Rutgers, 22. I I'm a big Greg Schiano guy, but I'm sorry. I was born at night, but not last night. Northwestern, 23. Get out. Yeah. That's okay. where you messed up. Why, why are we wearing hey, masks? We're trying to build off that 7-5 and five last year, you know? Yeah, which what? he probably, man, oh boy, could have won coach That's of the coach year of the year. year. I don't care what anybody says. Maryland at 24, and then Iowa State, as long as a fan tries to fight Matt Campbell within the first three to four games at, at 25. I just, I the, don't know just what it feels like to look at a top 25 and not see Alabama in the top five of it. Uh, well, because it's it's. I you, don't know. You want to know like. why? You want to know why that? Because it's asinine, to be honest. And top five, maybe not. Or but should top we read 25? into this? Nick Saban gone. You know, Ryan Day maybe panics a little David, bit. David, if Alabama, like, what will happen? No, you want to talk about panic? You think Jodie Foster panicked when she went in that little room, right? Panic. Or what about Oh Boy from Entourage? All right, and and you know, going in the, one of the Daily Wire hit movies, kind of like Lady Ballers, sh or Shut In. That, that's not even close. That's you think the state of the people in Hawaii panicked when that accidental nuke alert went out? No, 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 no. Alabama doesn't finish in the top twenty-five. Tuscaloosa may burn down. There may be no. It may be like Sherman marching. What I'd Atlanta. give up. What you? What would, what would, you, would give you give? What up? would I not give up? What would you? What well, would you give up I for Alabama day, not I to finish in the thing. top twenty-five? I think. Look, a, throw, I mean, throw question. I mean. What do you anything? Are are we are anything. we are we chopping things off or what? I mean No. Yeah, see, so I don't well, want to hear anything. Well, that's, that's not that's another No No Your foot. For never again? There's no, never, just this year coming up. No, I don't think I, I can't do that. That's not a good investment. All right. Well, I say for the rest of my life, for sure. Oh, I chop man. it off. Look, you ever seen... I've, you chop I, your foot off? I chop my foot off to not to see Alabama be in the top 25 for the rest of my life. Ever again. Look, you ever seen iRobot? Get another one. A better one. True. I chop it off with... The Achilles is already... A, is, is bummy. I already get another foot. Be back at 100%. Like Oscar, Oscar well, speaking about like the way. iRobot and stuff, that, that I have two thoughts on this here. Either one, we should really look at this as some sort of sign. Like maybe AI is trying to tell us something about this upcoming year. And, but the uh, world's going to end? Or on the flip side of that, maybe we should all feel a little bit safer that artificial intelligence and Grok isn't as far along as we thought. See, I don't because I feel like now it makes bad decisions. I feel like it makes bad decisions. Like if you're not putting Ohio State in the top 25 for next year, then, like, when do you just decide humanity doesn't Look, need man, to be around anymore? Will Howard, probably just not the guy. I mean, I think Grok knows. I, I think How they you could get tell in the, the wildcat. I think they could get in the wildcat every snap and finish in the top. Yeah, we just found out Kirby actually did the code for Grok. Yeah, it's Kirby's actually Kirby Grok. Smart, it's Kirby Smart's algorithm. So, man, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm a Howard, I want to see what the chat, like what does the chat think about this top 25? Um, let's go to Donnie T. Donnie, what's up? Says any top 25, 25 with Alabama not in it is an absolute joke. I mean, it is. I don't care who you root for. If we're going to play a game of look each other in the eyes and let's be honest, the fact that those two teams aren't in there. But in, the crazy part is some of this makes a lot of sense. Like, I could legitimately see Oregon at two. I could. If you look at, at Dylan Gabriel going there and what they return. Texas at three, okay. With Quinn and what they return up front. I, I just don't know how you put Georgia and Oregon and Texas in there. And you don't put Ohio State, but you have Michigan five. Who's Michigan's quarterback? David Orgy? Orgy's gonna fight for the job. There's gonna be an Orgy in the backfield to quote RG3. So it's a committee thing. Or it's maybe JJ McCarthy just doesn't get drafted in all of the rounds. Yeah, he's gonna probably go in number five, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tennessee at 10, Penn State at 15. I'm very intrigued by both of those teams right now. Yeah. Now, you see Drew Aller throw the football sometimes. It's like, that's how it's supposed to look. Then you see it other times. It's like, come on, man. Did, like, well, you have all the tools. That I hope the new offensive coordinator, and it, in the bowl game it did, I, I, I thought it looked like they opened up a little bit. That it seemed like there was no chemistry built between Drew Aller and a, and a good crop of receivers. That, that was the crazy part. It wasn't like they had nobody running around on the outside. Penn State had some cats that could play, but it just seemed like they were so safe and they protected Drew so much that there was no chemistry when they needed to have it in the couple games that they had to win, right, in, to be able to move on the, in the Big Ten. That, that's, you know, kind of been the bugaboo for Penn State. That's why I'm a firm believer. The two teams, and they're actually stacked on top of each other right there at 10 and 15, the two teams that benefited the most 
in all of college football from divisions being eliminated was Penn State and and Tennessee. Yeah. I, I I really believe and it. Ole Miss too. Yeah, uh, Ole Miss with the. Uh, you can make that argument. And Nico's about to be good, man. He is, man. There's going to be some up and down, right? That, that's you got to ride the wave. You got to become a surfer with a new quarterback. But he's he's special. I, I think Nico's special. All right, let's go to Ella Jackson. Hello, Ella. She says Alabama not in the twenty uh, top twenty five, but somehow they'll still make the college football playoff. <laughs> um, it's so fat. It's going to be so fascinating to watch Alabama this year. But this is where you know having your your quarterback come back makes that transition so much easier for Kalen DeBoer in year one because you're not having to, number one, rely on some young guy who's never played at this level before that you know it's, it's again, like I said, going to be up and down. But you have a guy that is the leader of the team that can be your voice in the locker room. He's a coach on the field. And hearing Kalen DeBoer say when we were down the Senior Bowl and talking to him that he is going to mold the offense to his personnel early just shows me how aware he is. And, and it, that takes a little bit of humility. I talked about this yesterday with Kentucky's new coach, is that when you get there, you, you don't have all your pieces yet. I know the transfer portal helps out, but the fact that he's willing to do that shows you, uh, you know, why he's won as much as he has. Now, not having Ryan Grubb, you know, people say, oh, it's DeBoer's system, oh, it's DeBoer's system. Listen, you can have the system, but if you're not the one calling the plays, those are two different things. So I'm very interested to see you know, obviously, I hope your boy, Nick Sheridan, uh, you know, your roommate, right? Yep. Is that your roommate in college at, at Michigan? Uh, he's he's going to be helping call and plays. It's going to be a team effort. We know that. But it's going to be fascinating to watch. All right, let's go to Jack Canant. What's up, Jack? Says, diehard Aggie and Cornhusker fan. Really? I know. Brutal. But this is great news, and we definitely won't flame out. Uh, for, for sure. <laughs> I'm I'm actually, as, as you know, we get closer and closer to college football. I've, I've got a theory about A&M this year. I've got a theory about Elko in, in year one that I'm interested to, to see what everybody thinks about. You know, Nebraska with Riola, um, you know, they're going through spring right now. The more I hear Matt Rule, the more I like this guy. I liked him at Temple. I liked him at Baylor. Go to the NFL. Look, I watched Nick Saban, you know, and Steve Spurrier and Urban Meyer be very average and below average in the NFL. So I'm not going to hold that against Matt Rule, especially when you went to the he Panthers. Went, and he was at Carolina. Yeah, when you yeah. went to the Panthers, who've made more bad decisions uh, than than a teenage boy, so it just is, it's is Dylan tough. Rayola starting week one. Mm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I think so. Too. Our, our Nebraska fans in the chat, let's. I, I want to hear what y'all think. All right, one more. Let's go to Tommy Guns. He says Notre Dame gonna kick some Cougar slash Aggie <laughs> ass week one. <laughs> the Water Boy is a cheater. Is that game in Ireland? What a week one opening. Uh, it is in. Hold on, Texas A and M. No, it's in College Station. Oh, wow. That's right. Mm, at, at least according to the yet. SEC printed out schedule. Let's see. Offensively, you know, again, uh, we know Riley Leonard coming over from Duke is going to be nice if he can stay healthy there at Notre Dame. It's can those young skill guys around him, you know, be able in, in, uh, to, to do what they need to do. And then obviously you lost Joe Walt up front. Man, but, Michigan at five. Grok really believes. Man. Really believes. Oklahoma at four? So this would mean Oklahoma and Texas came in the SEC and went nuts. Yeah. Went nuts. I know it's preseason, whatever, but that's uh, that's wild. Well, regardless, whether you watch the games, whether you listen to the games, you want quality. And we only we only push quality. Products. Quality. 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 If you want quality headphones, Raycon. That's yes. right. R-A-Y-C-O-N. I, we got our box uh, the other day. I ran with them yesterday. They're... It's an absolutely phenomenal product, and they're priced appropriately. These aren't some overpriced headphones, but Raycon offers you a sleek, comfortable design that gives you the ultimate audio experience. It's not just a tool. They're a mood enhancer, all right? And it transforms anything we use them for. They feel like an extension of ourselves, optimized gel tips. You can run, and they don't fall out. You can run, and there's no strings that are attached where you're knocking out with your, with your arms while you're moving them, um, and there's no discomfort. And also, the battery life's incredible. 32 hours, and you get eight hours of playtime. But the best part about it is, it's a quality product that is priced correctly. So whether you're going to the gym, whether you're running, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're on the airplane, for premium audio at the perfect price point, you've got to go with Raycon. So go to buyraycon.com booster to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's B-U-Y. 
R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash booster to get 20% off and free shipping. That's by Raycon.com slash booster. Raycon, have you heard about it? Get a pair for your lady as well. Have you heard about it? Heard about it? David, did you hear about it? I just heard about about it. it. Good. Get two pairs. All right, let's get to some of these reactions, Diesel. All right, reactions. First one up, Washington Huskies running back Tybo Rogers has been arrested on multiple counts of rape. Now, what what was the situation here where he was suspended for the Pac-12 championship? And then brought back. Then brought back for both of the college football playoff games, right? Yeah, it's now remember, Washington had an injury at running back going into the playoffs. Remember, their running back was beat up. That's right. And he was a freshman, I believe. And he was a freshman. This, this, this wasn't like that. They're the, the best guy they had in the room, but here's here's where I'm at with it. And I do think there needs to be an explanation from Kalen DeBoer on why he was brought back. Because look, due process, I'm all for due process, right? You're innocent until proven guilty in my eyes. Serious allegations, you know, misdemeanors, all that stuff, doesn't matter. You're innocent until proven guilty. But that doesn't mean you don't suspend somebody if they're under investigation or about to go through a trial, you know, on on something this serious. Like we see this all the time while guys are under investigation. He should not have been brought back. In my, it has nothing to do with whether you're an Auburn fan, whether you're an Alabama fan, and this has happened at multiple places. But I just I'm having a hard time understanding while this is going on. It's not like the charges were dropped, right, or, or anything like that. We've seen Terrence Shannon suspended from Illinois. It's it just Brandon Miller at Alabama suspended very briefly. I just, I, I'm having a hard time squaring how you bring this guy back uh, while this was going on. And now, I mean, you, you look at the way it's kind of ended. It's just a bad look, man. He has been suspended indefinitely now. Na- like now, first, yeah, first, for yeah. sure. Wow. Well, wow, that's surprising. Well, the thing about me is this. So you think if somebody gets alleged, all right, or there's an investigation or something going, you think that player should be suspended, removed? Depending on the seriousness of, of the, the, of the of allegation. allegation. Now, it, you know, when, when you look at, at the time frame and when it'll go to trial or, or, you know, how long you're looking at this person being available or not available, if it is something like a, a murder, right? If you're under investigation for murder, okay, and they're looking at you and questioning you and questioning people around you and asking you, I don't think you should be playing. Rape, same thing, okay? Sexual assault, same thing. Now, if we're talking about, hey man, you stole a pack of gum from Walgreens, all right, man, we're gonna run some stairs. All right, stealing's not good, but th- there's levels to it, right? This is just such a, there's such a serious nature in this, right? And And if there's some, past of, of the person who accused you has been caught lying before. Like if Jesse Smollett came out and accused somebody of racism, I'm just not gonna believe you. So it sounds like the first alleged incident took place last October. Mm-hmm. Involved a student at a nearby community college. A UW student reported an assault to the school's Title IX department in late November, right there before that Pac-12 championship game. Rogers was suspended by Washington shortly thereafter, did not travel with the team to the Pac-12 championship game, but was active for the two college football playoff games. Now, I understand that, you know, Washington's playing the college football playoff. They want to win those games. They have some injuries at running back. But what's surprising here is this is not like the star of the team who you no. need in your biggest no. moments. I mean, this was a freshman who, you know, had 184 yards rushing on the year on 44 attempts. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that the decision should change whether or not it's your best player or not. That's one of the things that's most frustrating to me. And we talked about it a lot with the Brandon Miller situation. Best player in college basketball, Alabama's finally the number one overall seed. That's why maybe he wasn't suspended like some of his <coughs> teammates were or something. We dissected that whole situation. But here it just is, it, it is extra surprising when this guy isn't one of the, the, the players on your team who you need most to win. For sure, and, and I, I wanna make this point too. This is why I'm a firm believer in that if you accuse somebody of rape or sexual assault or or something like that, and it's found out, let's say like Sean Oakman, right? You get suspended. Ruined his life. Uh, Yeah, ruined his life. And it gets found out that you did it for nefarious reasons, right? I feel like the person who accused should have to serve that jail sentence. The exact same sentence in the person if he got found guilty to the back. You want to stop? All this, because it really happens. We all know that. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to get people to, to not 
you know, tell people when something happened. But it, it also happens where a lot of people lie. There's a lot of, of instances, and it goes both ways, but a lot of times it's female to male. If it gets found out that you did it for nefarious reasons or you got upset because they had a girl on the side and you wanted to ruin their life, you should have to serve that, the Matt Ariza thing, right? The, the punter in the NFL. Yeah. That person should have to serve that sentence. It, they, and it'll stop it. It'll scare the hell out of them and stop it unless it really happened, and then you're going to find out that it really happened. Now, I do want to make this last caveat, Blaine, before we get in. I'm not saying that every time, if somebody gets found innocent of rape or sexual assault, that automatically the other person has to serve the sentence. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if it is found that that person made that up on purpose, made that up on purpose to intentionally hurt the other person, that person should have to serve the sentence. Like, it just, what if this kid was a senior, four years, dedicated kid, and someone alleges it, right? Alleges it. So you think, even if it's alleged, that he should miss time. Well, it's because, it's, in my opinion, like if, if someone alleges that and the coach is meaning like, all right, you're suspended, you're off the team. No, nope, that's not what out, I'm saying. That makes you look guilty. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if, if, if it is alleged and they reach out to the Title IX office and the Title IX office reaches out to the police and the police start investigating it and there's a there there, mm-hmm. then you should be suspended. Yeah. I'm not saying that, because that in that case, why would somebody not just, you know, if you're playing your rival, just call yeah. up on Tuesday during the week and say, yeah, the quarterback uh, sexually assaulted me. I mean, you guys coach, so you know how it works. All the coaches know the police officers. For right? sure. Like, they talk they talk on a regular basis. I feel like the coaches call up in this situation and say, like, hey, what's what's really going on here? Because after this incident, there was evidence, right? Like, well, they, they do rape kits, and they do yeah, things like that. Exactly. There's ways to... to to find out early if there's if there's seriousness. Yeah, but all, we say all, that and go ask Sean Oakman about that. Well, again, that's Look, that's get stuff wrong for sure. That, that's I, I'm not saying that was situation was right. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, if you one great deterrent to that is the woman who alleged that on Sean Oakman should sit her ass in prison for thirty I agree. years. Is I agree. what I think. I agree, and I think that's a different type of evil. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you. Here's a wild story, boys, that uh, producer Skyler found. This one hits a little close to home. This is uh, Georgia Southern quarterback, okay, in 2019, was arrested for bird poop, okay? A South Carolina deputy, Charles Browder, arrested GSU quarterback Shy Wirtz in 2019 after mistaking bird poop on the hood of his car for cocaine. No. I kid you not. He thought bird. No. Pulled him over. In Georgia Southern, so this is stuff. Statesboro. So this is your backyard. Yeah. Now, but that's not where, it, this was a South Carolina deputy. Okay. So don't blame okay. Georgia uh, cops. Wait, how did, he, okay. how did he figure out? That? And he ran a test. That's what made it worse. He ran a test not on a it on site test, and right? the thing turned he pink. He tasted it? He's like, it t- I don't think it was a taste. He's like, God, this cocaine tastes like bird crap. Long story short, uh, yeah, the... The deputy had to. Here's here's what I'll say. (laughs) Here's what I'll say. If you can't tell the difference between bird poop and cocaine, you do not need to have a a gun, a badge, or be associated with the police. With the police, you know, some pigeon sit on a power line laughing his ass off. Well, well, here's the thing. Like, what coked up pigeon? You found the main dealer. You said the test worked. So like they test it turned pink. He's like, it's turning pink, man. And and I was like, I swear to God, that's bird poop. Where where was it? Like where on the car? Like on the wind? On on the the, yeah, on the hood, I guess. On the windshield. I don't know. Like where bird poop would be. (laughs) Some bird trying to set up old boy from Georgia Southern. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden I'm I'm calling Georgia State's like like coach. Like like, y'all like like, 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 Raptor Center. Well, how why would there be cocaine on the front of somebody's car driving? Well, well. like was outside he put, he was of pulled it. over, right? So yeah, he, was, he, he had already been put pulled it over. on the hood. He had already been pulled over. Yeah, that's a that's a bad. One. Yeah, you shouldn't be. You said he resigned. Yeah, and good. We're all resigned, better for it. Um, when he resigned, uh, uh, Deputy Browder, he voluntarily turned over his personal cell phones as evidence, according to personal personnel records obtained by the news station. Uh, while going through his apps and messages, his supervisors learned he routinely sent sexually charged texts and photos to adult women while on duty. Those photos included a lewd photo he sent of himself while wearing his Lexington County deputy's uni- uniform. Oh, boy, took a DP with his uniform on? Yeah, he said he couldn't recall how many times he engaged in sexual activity while on the Well, if you're going to do that, you better make it good. Is he he playing in the Masters this weekend? (laughs) He's probably going to (laughs) win. It's like, hey, you want want to see a picture of my gun? The picture of Tiger with a mustache? Yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, man. All right, next one up here. That's wild. You said 2019? 2019, yeah. That's wild. Missed that, tough. Missed that story. That's tough. Talking about sexual uh, assault charges, you see Terrell Suggs? What, what was the news on Terrell Suggs? I think he like pulled a gun on somebody in a Starbucks. Oh, is that what it was? You want to talk about horrifying? Why I said you- Mocha Cheetah Frat! <laughs> Good God. Extra caramel, son! Is that what happened? Here's the thing. I, what I read was he was at a Starbucks. Good God. You know how scared that Starbucks barista was? Oh, not my even, God. Yeah, it's some granola Not even grabbed the gun just when he walked in. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah, I know. Why does Terrell Suggs need a gun? He is a gun. Yeah. Like, it's, but apparently there was a customer. And I want to see a picture of what this guy looks like. Like, it had to be Hulk Hogan or somebody that cussed out Terrell Suggs in line at Starbucks. And Terrell Suggs was like, I'll kill you, white boy, and like pulled a strap on him. Oh, no. First, can you imagine? Oh, First, no. Can you imagine? The Pelotas you have to have to cuss out Terrell Suggs. I, dude, I would just respect, respect. Either that or you are you are the dumbest person alive. The only person that can cuss out Terrell Suggs, you better be that size. Turn out, it turned out it was Joe Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing fast He's doing bucket Starbucks steps line. in the Starbucks line. <laughs> All right, three more here. Since we have championship golf today, <laughs> I want to bring up this video of John Daly when he oh, shot my hero. 18 on a hole. My hero. He shot at 18. John Daly, play this, please. And, uh, the temptations of how you cut the lake. Well, here's John Daly. Look at the number there. That's uh, <laughs> touchdown, <laughs> extra point, three field goals, and a safety. I don't know. I'd have gone for two. Ten cup. <laughs> Let's see what happened. <laughs> John started the hole off by driving the ball into the water, and then hit five consecutive three. <laughs> yes, the water. he went ten cup. His 15th shot ended up in the hazard. The key shot on the hole, though, it appears, was his 15th shot. It was a six <laughs> iron into the green, hit a rock, and bounced up into a green side bunker. Got it out of that bunker in 16 and two putted for 18. They did say, though, that when he got in, that he was in a pretty good spirit. He had told the press that the pressure was really on. He had one new golf ball left. Wow. That's why you got to love John Daly. Well, <laughs> I just want to know how many cigarettes he smoked on that hole alone. Mm. 18 shots? More than 18. Is there not a stroke limit? On a hole? No. No, but you do have the number of balls that you can play. That's with. right. So that's why I was, See, that's that was my last new golf ball. That's what would get me. Yeah, I'm I'd be out. I do that anyway. It wouldn't be that, hey, Jake, you shot a 132. It said, God, I ran out of, ran out of, ran golf out of balls. You would hear the, whoever I'm playing with, I'd ask him for a tee every second hole. Yeah, Blaine wouldn't bring it. Blaine forget to bring it. If I hit a good shot, there's no way that tee's getting picked up. <laughs> there's zero chance that tee's getting picked up. <laughs> hey, Scotty, you got a tee? Yeah, he's like, yeah, man, let's so give you one. All right, next one up here. Did you see uh, the video where Jackson Holiday got called up to the big leagues? Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's play this. I always love these. First, tonight, tonight, I want you to call your dad. Mm-hmm. I want you to talk to him, and I want you to thank him for all the times that he's allowed you to come to the clubhouse, mm-hmm. be on his pass list, you know, let you hit with the big boys. That's, that's pretty special, and it plays into a lot of what you're about. The second thing I want you to tell him is that now... It's time for him to ask permission to be on Jackson Holiday's pass list because you're going to the big leagues. Awesome. Wow. Hell yeah. That's, that's cool, man. I'm fired, man. Up. Well, I appreciate I'm fired up. You've, you've been exceptional down here, brother. You're 20 years old. I appreciate it. To handle it. all this stuff, that's dude. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. Dude. He's Congratulations. Good, dude. The yeah. Orioles are so yeah. Are you surprised? Are so good and yeah. young. Are we surprised that he's good at baseball? No, like his, you know, his, his dad's it, Matt Holiday. Yeah. It's He wasn't going to throw say, it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just looks like your prototypical, yeah. like, like Orioles are going to be a major problem. leaguer. Oh, they're a, a problem. They're a huge problem. It's they're all like 14 problem. years old. Yeah. yeah. They basically got a travel ball team. They yeah. They're the travel ball team of the major leagues. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's No, I'm happy for him. I know he didn't have the greatest debut uh, yesterday. I think his first at bat, he struck out and the guy got caught stealing. Oh, really? First at bat. Hey, it's all uphill. They uh, beat the Red Sox, though, right? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> Jeff. Y'all suck. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jeff. He's going to get here so Yankees early. didn't win for me yesterday. No, All I'm right. not saying we're good. Yeah, okay. Uh, last one up here. Let's take a look at two pictures of The Rock. One when he's in his 30s, one when he's in uh-huh. his 50s. And someone explain it to me. That's yeah, steroids. Blaine, explain it to me. Yeah, Blaine, look at his head. Look so at he the get, head. There's, there's, he, they put steroids in a needle. Yeah. All right? Then he goes and he, he puts it in his bum. All right, and he... Squeezes it in there, and he probably he can work out for twenty minutes. Twenty minutes, really? You can look, hell yeah! 
Look, when I was on... So that's all steroids. Yes. Look at his head. He has Barry Bonds' head now. Yeah, he does have Barry Bonds' head. Like, if you have, look, only thing I know, if you have no veins popping out anywhere, and think next thing you know, you're that? God, he looks like Batista. They look uh, exactly Yeah, that's, like I mean, that's, you gotta be juicing. That's almost impossible. But, uh, but like look, he's time. not, who cares if he's juicing? He's not out there, you know, getting upset. fastballs against the Orioles. Right? He's, he's not. When you want to look, like, think about, think about a baseball player looking like that getting up to the plate. Yeah, I saw him. His name is Mark McGuire. Exactly. That's what we want. So he went back to WrestleMania, I guess, this past week. Yeah. And the, uh, he turned around. The Undertaker was there, there. and Choke Slam had this good bit. So I, I tweeted at Kane. I said, man, this could be us. And he responded, Neighbors of Destruction. Neighbors, dude. Neighbors maybe one of my best lines yeah. ever. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he really looked like way that. better before. You think he looked better In before, my opinion, Justin? Yeah, the bodybuilder, it's, it's too big. Well, that's see. Yeah, that's see, I'm why I'm kind of about in the like business of judging guys. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not in that line of work. But when when I look at like, what do y'all think about women bodybuilders? Like to me, there's a point where it's like I just said I'm not in the business of judging guys. No. Well, <laughs> what what did what did Blaine say that one day? He's like, I don't want I don't want to be in a relationship where you're having to open things. Yeah, I don't want to be in a relationship where you throw me on the bed. You know, <laughs> like that doesn't that doesn't sound great. How about the uh, Lay out, sweetie. How about the, pick, the pickle jar when you can't get it open? Yeah, sweetie, come here. That's you though. Yeah. <laughs> Coming, honey. You come in with like you come in with like he's out there chopping wood. <laughs> Does it smell like he's running with logs? Good God. Hey honey, I'm gonna go on a 10-mile run with this log. Yeah, I don't want to turn on CrossFit and see my wife. <laughs> now look, the Peloton thing is a little bit different. Like those, yeah, being like, fit and being toned, that's different. Right? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm drawing the line. And Peloton, drawing the treadmill? Line. Treadmill? No, you treadmill? don't eat it. Don't make fun of me the way I say things. Meal? I don't treadmill? say treadmill. Treadmill? Yeah. There you go. Tread, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tomato. Well, potato, no. potato. I say, mater, you, I say mater. I say mater. You say mater. Yeah, nobody says potato. If you said potato, I'd kick you out of my house. Uh, I tell you what else I'm kicking out of my house. Hmm. My digital footprint, because I don't need to do be it. anywhere. But guess what? It's everywhere, and it's for everyone. What are you laughing? At? That was good, dude. That's oh, funny. thank you, thank you. I don't know. I felt like that laugh was. How, how do you kick it out, Jake? Uh, well, David, it's a great question. With delete me, that's right. And we're not saying you delete yourself. You're going to delete your information off the web because guess what? It's everywhere. And data brokers, right? Nefarious people that want to sell your information for money, and you wonder why you get all these emails from random places. Uh, it, it's what hackers do, all right? What does delete me? I'm going to make it simple for you, all right? It's a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal info being sold online. You'll receive a detailed report in seven days. They'll remove your... You're just losing your mind over there. They'll remove your personal information every three months. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, from old phone numbers, addresses, yeah. there's stuff online about you that... And you don't have to have a show. You don't have to play for the, the Royals, which nobody would care anyway with the way they're playing now. But your info's out there. So, to put it simply, Delete Me does all the hard work of wiping you and your family's personal information off the web. Data brokers hate Delete Me. They hate us because they ain't us. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. And now, at a special discount for our listeners, you get 20% off, which is going to make you 80% better. All right, your Delete Me plan, when you go to joindeleteme.com slash C-R-A-I-N, and use the promo code C-R-A-I-N. That's Crane. Surprise, surprise. What a coincidence. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash Crane. Enter that promo code Crane at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash Crane with promo code Crane. With Delete Me, you become even more relevant. Love it. All right. Phone lines are open. Are you going to get to him here in a second? Okay, just go ahead. Go ahead. But what's going on over there? Oh, no, nothing. I don't think I can read out loud, but just know it's hilarious. Okay, good. All right, let's go to a five dollar donation from Ty Reese. Ty, appreciate it, brother. Says Titty Boy Tanner. <laughs> Says UGA fans are atrocious. I don't see how you can hate from outside the club. We can't even get in. Ha ha. Chris Brown reference. You may kiss the ring. Now I'm allowed to hate something, am I? Aren't I? Uh, did he say hold titty on, boy? Hold on, hold on. What did he call you? Titty, titty boy, boy Tanner. Titty boy Tanner. Titty boy the city boy. Wow. Georgia, you, oh, you're talking about yesterday. Was that yesterday when you said that you hated Georgia? Uh, no. Or you hated, you, no, so I said it. Well, you like Georgia, the program. The, the like program, the, the fans are atrocious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, here's where I'm at. If you don't have some toxic segment 
of your fan base. I don't respect your fan base. How much you care? Like, if if I don't want it just to be like everybody's out there just, oh, well, I'm not okay, you're not okay, but that's okay. I don't need everybody to be the lawyers and doctors out there. You know, it's okay to have guys crawling on the ground barking. You need those drunk Is it okay? students at the game. Well, it's just, if your mascot's a dog. <laughs> okay. I mean, if it's a penguin, I don't want you doing that. You know, if it's Youngstown State or something like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, Auburn fans have, I mean, there's a top, most sections of Auburn fans are toxic, we're going to be honest. Alabama too. Fresno State. I can go down the list. Florida. Toxic. I was going to Jaquito Shatado Ronan. Probably messed that up. Yeah, I'm going to guess Might that. be right, though. I'm going to guess that wasn't I believe correct. in you. Might be right. Appreciate that, David. So it doesn't look like the rock steroids is on steroids. My man looked like he went full Sammy Sosa. <laughs> well, Sammy it's, boy. It, it, again, listen, your arms can get bigger. I know how you did that. Your legs can get bigger. I know how you did that. You can get six, hell, you can get an eight pack of abs. I know how you did that. Your head got twice the size. You didn't do that. <laughs> Steroids did that. That's the easiest way to tell, right? Look, you can go, every day it could be arm day. I'm pumping, I'm pumping, I'm, I'm jumping, right? But not, your brain and head is not going to get double in size. Okay, at least not yet. We haven't gotten that far in technology. Hey, if Grok's right on this AI top 25, though. Look, if Grok's right on this AI top 25, this college football season, David, is about to be, it's going to be like final destination, buddy. Mm. Like it's, Might be maybe the last this one. is the final. Maybe this is, oh no, everybody off the bridge. This is the last one. Maybe everybody off the bridge. I was going to Jack, Jack Doe 1196. He says, ah, yes, the art of bodybuilders, AKA the art of getting that big veiny wiener look all over your body. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me think That's it's super what I was bad. At. Like Vanny triumphant one. <laughs> oh yeah, boy! Yeah, you still let it. I yeah, I know. It's just you can say about, wiener. Yeah, I mean, you hear that gets us a strike then. Yeah, what? yeah. I'm so like you hear what a lot more say stuff than that. Yeah, let's be honest. All right, let's go to Tony T. Tony. Tony. What's going on, my brother? He says, right now, if Ohio State doesn't make the top 25, trust me, turn them on TV because I'm looking for the nearest cliff to jump off of. Yeah, it's like, why is, <laughs> why is there a lockdown on Ohio State's campus? Everybody's freaking out, running around. It'd be like one of those, you know, there was like a, there was, and I think it was in the United States. I saw there was like a, some sort of epidemic or, or something where everybody, there was like this laughing epidemic or something where like they had to shut down, like, like half a town, everybody just started laughing. Hmm. Like uncontrolled. It's a true story. I promise. Is it I'm not really? Making this up. I promise. I'm not making this up. Like everybody started laughing hysterically, and they couldn't stop. And people were having to go to the the hospital. They shut down the city. No, like I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. There's no way for I could have made this up. Like they just started laughing. Like ha ah! ha ha. Couldn't stop. Yeah, like Mugatu. Like couldn't stop. The Tang the Tang and Ika. Laughter ep epidemic yes. of 1962. Is this what you're talking yes. about? How do you yes. pronounce this? Yes. The Tanganyika. I don't know, but it hey, you want me to do it? Tang Tanganyika. Hey, hey, hey. The Tanganyika laughing epidemic of 1962 was an outbreak of mass hysteria or mass psychogenic illness rumored to have occurred in or near the village of Kashasha. Kashaka. Kashaka. Kashasha on the western coast of Lake Victoria in Tanganyika. Which is mm, it's beautiful. united hey, with hey, watch yourself. Zanzibar became the modern nation of Tanzania. Finally, we get to one <laughs> there, 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 near, yeah. near, near the border of Uganda. Okay, now we're getting some go. useful information. Soccer. Okay, the laughter Animals. epidemic began on January 30, 1962. If you're having to use a date like that, that means it lasted a while. January 30, 1962, <laughs> at a mission-run boarding school for girls in Kashasha. It started with three girls and spread throughout the school, affecting 95 of the 159 pupils aged 12 to 18. Symptom, symptoms lasted for a few hours to 16 days, averaging around seven days. Just Teaching ass. staff was unaffected and reported that students were unable to concentrate on their lessons. That's kind of like uh, tra the tra transgender issue we're dealing with now, right? Uh, how just so? Like, huh? Uh, just like, it's mass, mass hysteria, hysteria just catching on. Yeah, it's yeah. just... So everyone was just laughing, just laughing, and couldn't up. stop, couldn't stop the long giggle. Like I get when teachers just, like, well, they can't focus in school. Well, yeah, welcome to my life. Yeah, like, welcome yeah, to school. But just 
The school was forced to close on March 18th, 1960. This sounds like a a, a, a ruse. This no, like it's a, it's not. All the kids got. I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. Control. It's a TikTok for sure. And we say we can't help it. They got to shut it down. Like, they, like mass hysteria is a real thing. Well, it's like you Salem to, witch trials. And, and, yeah. and people will feel me out there. We we had an old coach in high school. And look, now I'm, I'm giving away the secrets. But what we used to do was like he got in trouble one time because, again, he was like old boy from the Junction Boys. Like he was super old school. And like we got in trouble because he got in trouble because he had us out there practicing basically like, during a hurricane. Like the superintendent drove out there was like, y'all got to get off the field. Get off the field. So he was like kind of nervous about keeping us out there during storms. So we figured out that whenever it looked like it may storm to get practice done early, we would all huddle up and we'd be like, three, two, one. Whoa! Lightning. Like lightning. Yeah. And he'd be like, we'd be like, all right, everybody back in the locker room. And it worked. And it worked. Now, he didn't really have that high pitch of a voice, but it worked. I was going to Tim Cornet. Timmy! Says, David, I have the same smile on my face knowing OSU fans are going berserk. After seeing this, yeah, don't count out Michigan this year. Their D will be even better than what you saw last year. Yeah, their defense is going to be really good, but they just had an injury in the secondary, which is mm. going to be pretty tough. I, yeah. I'm just wondering. I don't think they're going to be able to smush people up front the way they did last year. And you just lost so much leadership. And obviously, J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, uh, I, the quarterback position is not that Michigan's going to be bad. I'm not saying Michigan's going to be bad. But I would not be shocked at all if Michigan took a pretty big step back compared to last year where they absolutely ran the table and won the national championship. And you know what? I think Michigan fans will give Sharon Moore a reprieve with what, with what they lost. Sen- senior safety Rod Moore injured. Third team all Big Ten selection in 2023 reportedly tore his ACL during one of the Wolverines' early spring practices. That's tough. It happens. Man, that's tough. That's tough. All right, the phone lines are open, David. Tell me when you're ready to cook, but we're going to stay in the booth. Let's go to D.C. Wise. He said, if, if Ohio State doesn't make the top 25, I want to hear what Lou Holtz has to say about it. Um, Lou Holtz, you know, on his new podcast, you've seen Lou Holtz has a podcast. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't, I can't. And I got a ton of respect for Lou Holtz. A ton of respect for Lou Holtz. But I, I just, his, the way he talks is hilarious. Like, I can't, I, I can't not think it's hilarious. Right, but d- no, nobody hates Ryan Day more than Michigan fans and Lou Holtz. Never forget that. Have you actually listened to his podcast? I try. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I feel bad laughing at, at old people. Okay. Well, there's one I don't feel bad laughing at, but that's for another day. All right, let's go to PD. He says court records also include a law enforcement officer's uh, objection to Rogers being released. If released, the document read Rogers likes to commit another violent crime. When it comes to certain people getting suspended in football, yeah, no, it's I mean, again, it's it's not, it's, I mean, it, it's a process, right? It's uh, but you, there are ways to be able to substantiate things as you go along and say, hey, I feel like this is made up. There's no evidence. There's no there there as opposed to hey, we have, you know, we ran this test, we accumulated this evidence. It looks like something's going on. WC, what's up, brother? It says Terrence Shannon Jr. did the exact same thing. And was allowed to yep. play every game. Yep. Um, uh, and I would say the same thing. I don't care what team it is. I don't care if it's Auburn. I don't care if it's Georgia Tech. I don't care if it's, if it's you know, Cal Poly. Um, it, it should be handled the same way. Let's go to Flint Ironstag. He says there's also a dancing epidemic as well. Stop. An entire convent had a meowing outbreak of dancing. A meowing outbreak? Outbreak of dancing. I don't know if meowing is using it in a different term. Well, are they sure it just wasn't one big dance-off? Like, did they have, like— I'm on it. The dancing plague of 1518. Boy, or the just... dancing epidemic of 1518. Of 1518? case of dancing mania that occurred in Strasbourg. Strasbourg? Modern-day France in the Holy Roman Empire from July 5th. 1518 to September 1518. Stop. Somewhere between 50 and 400 people took to dancing for weeks. There are many theories behind the phenomenon, the most popular being stress-induced mass hysteria. Uh, the other theories include religious explanations. There's controversy concerning the number of deaths. Yeah, I would imagine so. So people just started dancing. Dancing. 50 dancing. to 400, just dancing. Just so they weren't out there like stomping the yard in 158. They're out there playing with flutes. I don't like, know. Hey, I mean, modern day France. You know, I'm sure they're having a good time. 
eating crepes or whatever. No, look, crepes are always a good time. All right, let's go to Eddie. What's up, Eddie? He says, apparently The Rock has an alarm clock that goes up at 345, and he works out for six hours no. before taking any meetings. What like it gets to the no. point, in my opinion, like no. If you're six hours in the gym, you're hurting muscles. Yeah, hurting. I don't believe I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. I think you wake up at about 545. Take the needle. You get that needle, you know, you, you put it in there, you go go lift for about two hours, right? Realize how rich you are, probably go eat some like super good for you breakfast that's also delicious because you have like a personal chef. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't. But I like the rock. I don't dislike The Rock at all. I think The Rock's incredibly talented. I just don't think you do that. All right, let's go to Ratchet Dewan. He says, Dancers be- uh, dancing is better than consistent, uh, c- constantly laughing. If you had to have one, which one would it be? Can't stop laughing or can't stop dancing? Well, I feel like you'd be dancing because I'd be in really good shape. Like, at least, you know, if I'm laughing, like, I- all of a sudden I turn into Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker. Like, uh, I just don't want to be going around on the bus, like, laughing at everybody. But that hurt. Let's go to Elizabeth Lou. Elizabeth, thank you. She says, Shannon was suspended by the school until there was a court ruling allowing him yeah. to play. That, that's what I again. thought. Because I remember when, when he that? came back. Um, I remember when he came back, there was obviously a lot of controversy. You know, uh, Brad Underwood, you know, brought him in. I mean, and and you know, th- say what you want about Terrence Shannon. And I not I'm not a fan of the way he conducts his business. But he was the best thing about that Illinois basketball team on the court. And that's another thing that made the UConn win and, and the 30-0 run over Illinois to start the second half so impressive is that, you know, Terrence Shannon really didn't do anything. But um, that was on September 9th, 2023. Yeah. I remember that was a big deal. That was a big deal. Because, I mean, he's a top-level NBA prospect, too. I mean, this has, this has uh, uh, repercussions. So 1-855-236-3228. Give us a call. Let's go to SPG Bird Dog. What's up, Bird Dog? Says UGA fan here. Blaine used to be among my top three sports commentators until today. Yep. Mm, what happened? Well, smart uh, man. It's love. I'm giving love and hate it at the same time. That's that's what you prefer, right? <clears throat> that is, that a little mixed bag. All right, let's go to Ruka six one seven BC versus Michigan in the Frozen Four today. The Eagles are going to soar past the Wolverines in your face, David. Mm. Yeah, let's see what time that game is. Mm, you'd love to see it. Um, so it's Boston College, and then the other side is Boston University against Denver, I believe. Just everybody from Boston. Yeah. Imagine Boston College and Boston University both get in. All right, no calls. I'm going to get to bets, and we'll get back to the Booster Club. All right. Sounds like it's at 6 p.m. Uh, tonight? I think so. Uh-oh. Here's what I got. Shoffley beats Joaquin Neiman, minus 140 today, just straight up. Right? If it's a tie, it's a push. Uh, Matsuyama, I got him over Rory McElroy because I just don't believe at plus 105. David, what do you got? All right. Tonight, I am going to take, I'll never forgive the Yankees, by the way, or Cleveland for that matter. Today, I'm going to take Kepka, shoots lower in the first round than Jordan Speed. That's minus 115. And then Scotty Scheffler, under 71 and a half strokes in the first round, minus 150. All right, little one and one yesterday. God, God, this can't go two and zero, oh, man. Just need that one day to break through. I'm rolling back with the Tigers, Minnesota, uh, Nerfy. That's going off at minus one eighty. They believe. They believe there's going to be no runs. Then give me Milwaukee and the Reds. Another Nerfy that's going off at minus one thirty. All right, Harrison English under seventy. He's going to shoot under seventy three uh, or seventy three and a half. So seventy three gets you there at minus one hundred five. Then Ace has Morikawa beating Tiagala at minus 115. All right, back to the Booster Club. All right, let's go to— I think the phone line, something, something may be wrong. Let's go to LB. LB, what is up, man? Really appreciate you hopping in the chat. He says, right now I'm putting all my money on Tiger Woods. Is there still any more live beef with the regular tour players in golf? I think so. Yeah, I—, I you don't forget. I mean, it's not as pronounced now, but, you know, because they've, they've merged together. It's kind of like live one, but I think there's some hurt feelings about guys that made a lot of money and then other guys that didn't when, when they decided to, to go take it. You heard McElroy say that he felt like a sacrificial lamb. All right, let's go to Devin. What's up, Devin? It says, Rogers was never arrested during the season. The accusation happened. He stayed home from the Pac-12 championship. Then nothing was said about it after that until now. Kind of weird 
timing, and reasoning. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's go to a $5 donation from Gibby the Great. Appreciate it, Gibby. Says, for the love of baseball, somebody get Mike Trout off the Angels, please. I'm sick of watching. I can't take it anymore. I, we talked about this multiple times. I mean, just you feel bad because, you know, it, I mean, Mike Trout's a loyal guy. You know, you didn't hear him really come out and, and bash the Angels and say, oh, you ruined my career. It's just sad because not that, he can't be effective anymore. I mean, he's gone through injuries, but it just, you know, you wonder what he would he would have been like if he, he would have been on a contender and the Angels have just basically been the Panthers of Major League Baseball. All right, let's go to Blake T. What's up, Blake? He says, have y'all been to any professional golf tournaments? If so, what's the fa- your favorite Never one been. you have been to? Yeah, actually, the best sporting event that I've ever been to is when I followed Tiger Woods up 18 at the Players' Championship in Atlanta in 2018. Now, I got overshadowed a little bit when he won the Masters the very next year in 2019, but think about it. At that point, he hadn't won a tournament in five years. We didn't know if Tiger would ever win another tournament, much less like a, a major championship. And he was in contention. On Sunday, I was like, you know what? We're going to get tickets. It's right down the street at East Lake Golf Course. So we went, and following him up 18, when everyone just swarmed the fairway, was one of the coolest sporting events ever. Yeah, I, I want to go to one. I, I want to go and, and see the practice round, too. They say that's, the, that's one of the best times to go because you actually get more access to, to the players. All right, let's go to the dog man one. He says, you guys are investing a lot of time and energy into a leisure activity. Breaking news, golf isn't even a sport. That's like betting on competitive checkers. This guy thinks esports is a sport over here. Yeah. Now, look, if you've I mean, ever it's, played it's a golf, definition of a sport, golf is electronic. Golf to me is is, I mean, one of the hardest things to do. Not that everything that's hard to do is a sport, but I mean, at the end of the day, man, I mean, if you ever played golf, and it's fun. I mean, look at where we're at right now. What, what we got going on? We're kind of in the not the black hole area of sports as we get done with March Madness, but. The Masters kind of fills that void uh, before I have to make myself watch the NBA playoffs. I'm excited about the NHL playoffs, though. We do have the draft, and UFC 300 this weekend is going to be pretty freaking awesome. That card's absolutely loaded. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Doghouse. He says, do you feel like Rory McIlroy's career has almost been a letdown? Look, man, he's won, what, four four majors? Yeah, I wouldn't say a letdown. He started off so hot. I wouldn't say a letdown. I, I would say that... Has he reached the potential that everybody thought he was going to when when you know when he started? No, I think you could say the same thing about Jordan Spieth, too, you know, to be honest. Um, but they've they've been uber successful. It's just, you know, when you're comparing everything to Tiger Woods and you're expecting somebody to be that dominant and it doesn't happen, then you know, it just it just is what it is. He won four majors in a three-year stretch from 2011 to 2014 and no majors in, in the decade since. Yeah. All right, phone lines are open. 1-855-236-3228. Not a lot of calls today, man. Maybe y'all aren't excited about golf. I don't know. All right, let's go to Mr. T. Mr. T, welcome back in here. No one's talking about Jordan Spieth. The kid's been hot lately. I think he can make a run at the Masters this week. Hmm. I just don't believe in Jordan Spieth, man. I just really? Don't. I just don't. Not, 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 in the, not in the clutch moments. I just don't. Not this weekend. Don't. So you don't think he has... What's, the, what's Jordan's odds? I'm pulling it up now. I just don't believe it. I mean, God, he, there's no way he has worse odds than Dustin Johnson. I would think they'd be under 5,000. I would trust Dustin more. than Not that Dustin's the most clutch player on tour. I'm not saying that. But I would trust Dustin more than I would Jordan. What makes you say that? Just because I don't trust Jordan. I, I, it's not like, oh, wow, I really, really trust this guy. This is the guy I trust the most. It's that when compared to each other, like I don't, I don't trust Jordan Spieth as much as I do Dustin Johnson because I just think Dustin Johnson doesn't care as much. Plus 2,200 for Jordan. Nice. That makes sense. All right, let's go to AA. What's up, Alan? He says, golf is the hardest sport to play. Well, there's no question. Hitting the baseball is obviously the next hardest. I'd agree God. with that. I'd agree with that. Um <sighs> I mean, I, hitting a baseball has to be harder than hitting a golf ball. Nah, you say that. It's just I would, ra- I would rather get up. The other one's going that's fast what, and changing speeds. and I don't know, man. Like, that's what makes it so frustrating is that I would, I would rather get in the box and I would feel better about hitting somebody throwing 85 than getting up there and saying, I'm going to play 18 holes and I can shape the golf ball where I want, when I want. 
And the ability for success is wider when you're hitting a baseball, right? Like if you pull one down the line and it's fair, that's a great hit. If you push one the other way, that's a great yeah. hit. You could bloop one. You could do any number of things. Whereas in golf, if you have that same like wide of a spread, that could be a terrible shot, you know, versus what has yeah, to be one's just shot. One's just stationary. All right. We have our, our calls are ready. They're ready to All right. Ready to get to Matthew in Arkansas. Matthew, what's up? What's up, Matthew? Yeah, Razorbacks. Yeah, uh, we were, we were going to get to it, man. Calipari, uh, you know, obviously had his press conference yesterday. Got an unbelievable warm welcome uh, in Fayetteville. Just, it's just weird to see Matthew. I'm not going to lie. Like it, uh, seeing Calipari in that red. How I know Arkansas fans are excited. Is is there a little bit of worry that maybe he's a little washed? Honestly, I mean, I'm probably just getting that hope-filled heart right now. But right now, I am all on board. I think he's going to be angry with that chip on his shoulder. I agree. He wants to prove the doubters wrong. I mean, this is his chance, y'all. I mean, if he wins a championship at Arkansas, he is a top five all-time coach in college basketball, unquestionably. Well, I mean, you, you look at, and we talked about this yesterday. I mean, I've seen DeMarcus Cousins come out. I've seen John Wall come out. I've seen Malik Monk come out. These guys are all going to be in Fayetteville. Not that they're not connected to Kentucky still, but, you know, Coach Cal helped them, you know, get the bag, the big bag. So when I'm looking at, at Arkansas's roster right now, and Calipari brought this up, said he had a team meeting and three guys were there. Yeah. So, um, I went, but a lot of Kentucky's players are, you know, getting out of their letters letters of intent and things like that and i would sure a lot of them would probably go to arkansas i know that big uh uh big z looks like he may be headed to arkansas yes he yeah i saw that post he made on his instagram and i'd also be very interested to know who those three players were that are in the transfer portal because the fact that they were there tells me they're probably thinking about coming back well look if, if he needs somebody to play the two you know, I can I can shoot pretty well if you've watched Lady Ballers. Y'all know what's up. But no, I I saw too the incentive structure. I think he gets, I think it's fifty thousand for making the NCAA tournament. I think he gets a hundred thousand for making it to the second round, and just increasingly goes up. I mean, John Calipari. Here's the best way to put it: took a pay cut to go to Arkansas, and he's the second highest paid coach in college basketball. Mm. Think about that. That's wild. Now the question now becomes, who does Kentucky? And the, two questions: one, who does Kentucky hire? Like Scott Drew, looks like he's he's struggling with his decision. And and the second thing is, if you're heartbroken, hog, you're not heartbroken anymore, right? Oh, not right now, y'all. <laughs> but not, well, we got oh, it's coming. Week two might be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you ready to get let down or what? Yeah. Appreciate it, Matthew. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, man. Call in soon. You too, Rob. All right, let's go to Oscar in Reedsville. Oscar, what's up? Reedsville. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? What's up, Oscar? Uh, Not much. Just enjoying this beautiful day Mm -hmm. uh, in Reedsville. There you go. (laughs) But, but, uh, no, I kind of miss, uh, misworded uh, the comment I said earlier about Scotty being the next Tiger. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Personally, I think I—I I mean, I grew up watching Tiger as well, so we can relate to that. I mean, just the dominance of his impact, and like, I mean, hopefully he can get a six uh, green jacket. That'd be pretty historic to watch, and yeah, hopefully right off the sunset like a champ. Well, I, look, man, I—I I like Scheffler a lot. I mean, he's a really likable guy. I mean, if you you watch full, he's swing, a Georgia boy, isn't he? I believe so. Scotty, Georgia boy. Georgia. I think so. I might He's be wrong. Texas. I don't think Texas. So. Texas. Yeah. Texas. That's it. That's right. Gotcha. He's gotcha. from Texas. Where did he where did he did he play college? I feel like he He's from got Ridgewood. He He's from Ridgewood, New Jersey. Okay. Originally. New Jersey. Ridgewood, New Jersey. He just uh he lives in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Though. Gotcha. Okay. And he went to Texas. So God, they, like, Texas. when it comes to Tiger, like I just if he wins it, that that'll be great. Phenomenal. Come on, Tiger. If Tiger yeah. wins it? Tiger wins it. But like, just I just don't go out there and look terrible. That's what I don't like when guys just make the cut. Just make a cut, you know. Be close. You don't have to be in contention on Sunday. Can you imagine though? And and we saw this 
you know, a couple of years ago when, when Tiger had that resurgence and, and when it can, winning it. Can you imagine Tiger pulling out the Sunday red and he's close? Oh. You talk about people still fear this man. Like, yeah. at the top, fear this man. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, that's what I want to see. That is golf at its, at its highest point to me. Who do you got winning, Oscar? Yeah. And, Scheffler? Well, personally, yes, I want Scotty to win because he, I don't know if y'all seen what he said or, um, yeah. During the, during conference call, he said golf don't, doesn't define him, only the, the, the man upstairs will, what it defines him and all that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty powerful, especially with nowadays. I mean, you got all kinds of craziness in the world. And mm-hmm. as a, I mean, I've only, I helped out with our, with the church, um, over here in Connection College, uh, Varela. And so it's pretty cool to get them to be inspired. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome what he's doing. He's, uh, he's putting his faith out there. You no, know, uh, not everyone does that. I mean, Tebow is a perfect example, of, mm-hmm. and there's a handful of them. But going national, going especially in a big stage like that, that's pretty awesome. How he comes, uh, believes in his faith and believes in the man upstairs. Yeah, and he's well, well, he's willing to talk about it too. I mean, like you said, it's nowadays where everybody's, you know, most people try and play it safe, and they're afraid to to rock the apple cart, and not just be themselves on something that's so like non controversial too. I mean, it's it's. I don't. I don't think it's some crazy thing to to even if you don't believe. Like I, I. I well, just, it's different than expressing religion and <laughs> pushing religion on people. I think. Mm-hmm. You can talk about your faith and everything, and that's great. That's what makes America great. But once you start pushing religion on people, yeah, I feel like then then, then we get that. in dangerous water. I Appreciate it, Oscar. Great Oscar, call, thanks, Oscar. buddy. You're definitely not the grouch, Oscar. Hold down Reedsville for us, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's go to JT in South Carolina. JT, talk to us. JT. Hey, fellas. So I'm sitting here watching the show, and Jake has taken two stabs at my Panthers, and I get it. All right, JT, uh, come on. We got to be honest, dog. Get him, JT. We got to be honest, dog. Believe you me, it's a dumpster fire. And a year ago, I called in asking what we should do about the number, the ninth overall pick, stating an all-star coaching staff, and that aged horribly. So believe you me, I get it. <laughs> Can you please give me just some hope and free agency? Give me your opinions. Uh, give me some hope. Dan here's Morgan, what, big Dan yeah. Morgan guy. Come on. You know. Yeah. Here, JT, here's what I'll say. Number one, I if I have to, and and look, I've got no – I like the Panthers. They had they had Cam Newton, right? You know, I'm, I'm from Auburn. But I, I will shame them into making better decisions if I have to. Mm-hmm. And you should want that. You should Absolutely. want that because no, I, I, I challenge anyone, and there's some that are out there, I guess, but I challenge anyone to find an athletic organization that has made worse decisions from a personnel standpoint than the Carolina Panthers. Outside of Bryce Young, who I still – oh, there is an NBA team somewhere. There is one somewhere. It's the Hornets or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it, – it, Outside of Bryce Young, I believe I still believe in Bryce Young, right? I don't think Bryce Young has had the opportunity to really, you know, do what what he's capable of doing. It it takes takes a village, right? When it comes to football, Derek Brown, incredible player, but like at some point, maybe it just can't get any worse than this, right? Maybe it's all sure. it's 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 easier from here on out. I'm just to the point now where it almost feels masochistic to me are like self-sabotage because there's been... Se- you know, you're going to make some bad decisions. You're going to make some good decisions. Hell, you may screw around and just draft a quarterback with your last pick of the draft who ends up being elite mm-hmm. like or have a chance to be elite like Brock Purdy. It's just at some point, are you doing it on purpose? Like, how can it be this bad for this long? Here's some hope for you, JT. This is still an NFL franchise, right? And the NFL values parity above all else. They do. So you're not going to be bad for like a long, long time. And I just watched the Detroit Lions win their division, right. make it to the Point. NFC Championship. If Detroit can do that, yeah. brother, there's always hope. Hey, look, Man. and y'all can change the trajectory with that first round pick this year. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, like, well, you Blaine's got a second Brutus, round. He'll stab you. When you, you have a second around. round. All right, your second round, thirty ninth pick, or you have the thirty third pick. I mean, you what? What, what do you take? Second round, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> second round. Yeah. You got thirty three and thirty ninth. All right. 
So right now you lost Burns, correct? Yep. yep. Well, he just got like for a nothing fifty million for nothing. Bad. So you just you're trading one a young great player. So obviously you got to get an edge. You don't have to get an edge player. Thirty three. You got to go what? Probably receiver. I mean your best receiver is Adam Thielen. Yeah. Basically yeah. some dad who dropped his kid off at soccer practice. Then come in. I mean Adam's good. He's just old. So I mean, well, what, right, where are you right. gonna go? What are you gonna fix? If it's me well, right now, you projected Roman Wilson. Hey, hey, there's some hope for you. I mean, hey. knowing the Pat Panthers, they'll go get Lad McConkey if he's still available. Hey, do you try to do you try to work up to the first round? See, I was wondering that. No, do you, do you, no. no, no, heck no, no, absolutely no. You just see bodies. Well, I just, you don't have the capital to do that. No, yeah, yeah you really I, don't. I mean, I think. Uh, I think a lot of those choices actually came from uh, the predicament we're in actually came from Matt Rule because he had more authority than Scott Fitter. And I think, you know, so you had Teddy Bridgewater, you had that huge signing and then bailed on his contract a year yep. in to go get Sam Darnold, give up all that draft capital, get Sam Darnold. And it was just, <sighs> now we're, I mean, Dan Morgan is having to fix. And that poor opinion, guy, Scott that Fitter. poor guy. Yeah. It's like it's like it's it's like on those house flipping shows when you see what a house is just a disaster and they're like, man, I don't know, this is so bad, I don't know if we can rebuild this. Like Dan Morgan's out here trying to do the Lord's work. But That's how it looks after my kids bring all their toys down. I can yeah. I can only imagine. JT, appreciate it, man. Great call, Thanks, JT. Hey, call in again before the draft. All right. Yes, sir. See you, fellas. See all you. right, buddy. Man. All right, let's go to Josh quickly in North Carolina. Josh, you got 30 seconds. Oh, oh man, here he is. Money. Bum, 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 uh, bum, uh, bum, bum, you know what, Blaine? That, that's really funny. It's really funny for you making fun of the Panthers because I remember uh, Auburn uh, oh. 4 31 against Oh, Alabama. Josh, oh, why do you got to end the day go. like this? Taking the nice deeper. There you go, just for you, buddy. Uh, that, dog's, for that joke's about to last as long as Luke Keekley's career. Mm. He's a good player. Hey, I'll wow. take no wow. Luke Keekley slander great. on here. It, it Look, like everyone can get it. As long as uh, your hey, quarterback will. Do. Aren't you betting money? You know? Aren't you losing money on Rory McIlroy this week? Are you betting Rory, I, Josh? I'm really not, because you, you you know what I believe in? I believe in um, a guy that I've never watched the sport, but I believe in a guy who okay. has won majors in the past, and mm -hmm. just something crazy always happens in the Masters. Mm -hmm. And I'm just betting it. I only threw ten bucks on it. Josh, so if I lose ten bucks. I lose ten bucks. Ten bucks is fine. Josh, don't unit I, I, shame around here. Josh, ride with ride with Wyndham yeah. Clark with me. Come on, let's ride through the mists of Avalon together. I wanted together. to bet him so bad too. I might, uh, I might throw a little bit on. Just look. Just like, don't I'm telling you. On like there, I'm telling you. Like there's a guy life. There's a guy's <sighs> life on the line this weekend. in Hideki Matsuyama. <laughs> <laughs> His life is on the line. What is that? What is it's it? either win or commit Sepku. <laughs> is Sepku the when samurai? He steps, yeah, when he steps off the course <laughs> to honor its How family. can we talk? This show, <laughs> the laughing epidemics, Sepku, oh, the man. masters. I'm telling you. Who knows? It's just a buffet of I who had knows. A question. I had a question real quick. How, um, I've never really like paid close, close attention to the masters. How do y'all go about watching it? Do you just watch whatever you can, or do you just, like, choose certain things? Nothing players? pisses. Turn that TV on. Ooh. Go, yeah, you, you, Blaine. So, to, on the TV, you're going to be watching on TV, all right, but you're also going to have your laptop pulled up because you can just watch specific specific holes on the yeah. Masters. They have a great right, app. Right, right, right. They, have they really so, like, have a great app. Have the Masters app pulled up. You can watch okay. the uh, certain holes, which are beautiful, and then you can follow certain groups. Right, so you can do both at the same time. Good. Yeah, that's what I do at least. Cool. Yeah, and All I also right. talk Sounds with my like hands. Good Thanks, guys. In, enjoy it, Josh. See you, Josh. See, See you, buddy. Josh. Sorry, what happened against uh, Purdue? Anyways, yeah. All right, let's scroll through these donations, and then we're gonna get to the poll. Well, you know, if this computer would work, come, come computer. on, guys, come on. Yeah, hey, you got this. It's just you know, I don't ask for much, just stuff to work. That's all I ask. You got I'm doing my there. job. Get back in there. As he's, I'm doing my job. What, what's going on over there? No, I got it. I just had to restart everything. All right, let's go to a $5 donation from Charles Dossett. I will give you a small donation because you said the words UFC. Tomorrow. Now make it tomorrow. more than two words. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Charles. Hey. Tomorrow, Charles. Like a hospital. Have some patience. Yeah. All right. Let's go to our resident Phillies fan, Ryan Gade. $5 donation. So like Tiger is doing, Blaine has been getting ready for the Masters for two years in. Hashtag dry spell. 
Hashtag Mott Stick Stacy. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to make it? Ryan you really always. Make, oh, Ryan always. You want to make an enemy boy. out of me, Ryan? Yeah, I love All it. All right. I love it. No, wow. Ryan's, Ryan's slowly becoming the villain. All right, final donation from Joshua Pizzol. Appreciate it, Josh. Think y'all forget about MJ's Dream Team Tour. Also, Sleeper for Masters, Fowler. Ricky? I hope so. I like I love Ricky, man. man. I like Ricky. All right, let's go to $5 donation from War Chant. Can I get a shout-out for my son, Colson? The travel baseball season starts today. Pray for no rain and go ghost. Colson. Go ghost. Remember two things. One, you're a champion. Two, your hands are always faster than what you think. Enjoy travel ball, man. It's so much fun. God, I miss those days. $2 donation from Dave's Faven, Humping Badger. It says, put Ooh. some respect on Wisconsin's name, Cone. See you in court. See yeah. you in Judge Walsh's court. That's true. All right, $10 donation for Christina Hopkins. Need an inspirational speech for my daughter. Tore her ACL. This is her third ACL surgery for her ah. husband and both daughters. I need your prayers. Love you, gents. Go blue. Love you, Christina. God, All the prayers for, you. for your daughter. That's tough. You're going to come back well even served. better. Yeah, uh, listen, here's what I'll say again. You know, it's, it's not if you get knocked down. It's how you get back up. I, I know it's tough. You know, you've been through it before. You understand what what it takes to do it. You listen. It's 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 a it's a tough deal. But but the minute you quit, it's the minute it wins. So and, and look, we live in a day and age, you know, medically and and from a sports physiological standpoint, where you can come back from ACLs. Man, it's not like it was, you know, back when my dad was playing, where you tore an ACL, you were pretty much cooked. Or you know, back in the day, where if you had you know you messed up your elbow in baseball, there was no Tommy John, you were cooked. So just just keep fighting. I, I know it's tough. I know uh, it's it's something that's tough to overcome, but but we believe in you. All right, remember we have the five dollar donation from Major Moose Knuckles. I can't read it, but appreciate the donation. All right, says poll. Will Tiger Woods make the cut hmm. in the Masters? Yes, David. What do you or think? no? Let's see. No, fifty five percent. God, I feel like you're right on the money, but I'm gonna go yes, just in general. Yes. yes. 63%. Wow. Ooh, I'm telling Tiger you, Tiger still, people still believe in Tiger. They still believe in Tiger. Appreciate you guys. Everybody that called in. Bet online. Raycon, delete me. Oh, quickly. Quickly. Um, I know he didn't call in today, but he's all in the chat. Kirk, the bet comes down to today. Leafs win or Flyers loss. I lose the bet. So, so the Flyers have to win and the Leafs have to lose. Wow. Correct. For like the rest of the season. Whatever, what? two games. And like two games. Well, you're the one that said it comes yeah. out. I have to go day, back and look. So. I have to go back and look, but it's not looking good for your boy. Oh, well, it looks like. What did we say we we're going to give Kirk? I don't think we said we're going to give him anything. No, nah, we did oh, say because I told yeah. him he's going to have to give me one of them raccoons. He'll call in tomorrow. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. He'll, we'll hear from him tomorrow. Sky hook him in here. All right, we appreciate everybody. Got a great show for you tomorrow. Going to be talking a little bit of everything college football, UFC, obviously what happened day one at the Masters. Uh, and obviously, we look at the playoffs for NHL that's coming down the pipe and obviously Major League Baseball as well. Huh. Like Tiger's career here in a couple years. Maybe even this year. Maybe even after this Masters. We'll see if he makes it. We're going, going. Mm. I'm telling you. Oh, kid. I'm telling you. Gone. It's cash. <laughs>